It is a beautiful day here in Monaco and today is about a unicorn, a car that when I first saw it 10 years ago absolutely blew me away. Today we are here with the formerly owned by Jamiroquai Signal Green LaFerrari, the one of one bright, oh look over there, Aston Martin Valkyrie is going past. Wow, welcome to Monte Carlo. I should have heard that gearbox whine coming a mile away. One of 150 Aston Martin Valkyries, and we're here with this, this Signal Green LaFerrari with the owner, about to head out with it. That wasn't planned in the slightest. That was not staged one bit. Welcome to Monte Carlo. <laughs> Little known to me, that was actually being driven by Mika Hakkinen, which is pretty cool. But unsurprisingly, when you park a bright green LaFerrari here in the port, it attracts quite some attention. It's really a cool story behind this thing. Jamiroquai wanted to create a colour for the LaFerrari that it deserves. Something very bright, something very different, something that really suits the character of Ferrari's hybrid hypercar. There is no question that this stands out a mile away. I mean, this is literally the capital city of the world when it comes to incredible cars like this. And I first saw this such a long time ago, actually caught a glimpse of it a few months ago, which is why we're here now. I feel like today might quickly descend into a car spotting session. Bentley Continental GT heads by, but the plan is to show you around this completely unique example of Ferrari's hybrid hypercar and the reasons behind the specification. Just come and have a quick look inside at the green details in here. When JK originally spec'd it, there was a reason behind why he went for this colour scheme. I'm going to explain all of that in a moment and uh, yeah, just head out maybe up into the hills. Enjoy what this car is about because how often do you get this opportunity to be reunited with a unicorn like this? It's literally a rolling car show here. Ferrari Portofino has just gone past and we're of course here with this. We're actually right beside the Formula One track. It comes straight through here, past the swimming pool, down to the pits, around the start line runs here, all the way across and then goes up the hill towards Casino Square. You can just capture over there, down through the tunnel, back all the way around to where we are now with this extraordinary machine. One of, as I said, 499 cars originally. Ferrari's first hybrid vehicle. The Limited Series, of course the SF90 being the first full production hybrid, but this really giving an example of where it could go. 963 horsepower from an electric motor coupled with a 6.3 litre naturally aspirated V12. When it came to the FXXK Evo, power jumped up to 1050. That's the track version based on the LaFerrari. You have Active Aero, this rear spoiler actually deploys out, pops out towards the back, and it just looks phenomenal. It is a breathtaking looking machine. Now inside, like I mentioned about the spec, the reason for the black and green is because Jamiroquai with his previous car, the Enzo, had a black car over a green leather interior. So the idea here to bring that green through, as you see with the lower sections of the dashboard, the piping, the Cavallino embroidery, all of the details, and in fact here, look at this, Jamiroquai still on the plaque there on the squared off steering wheel, all inside the carbon fibre tub, the seats are fixed, you move the pedal box with the lever just down here, adjust the steering column as well to get the right seating position, and it's a car that, as I've said a few times before, when it was initially introduced, I wasn't completely blown away by the looks, but the more time that's gone, gone by, the more I have fallen for this and everything that it represents, what it's about, La Ferrari, the Ferrari, quite literally, the pinnacle of their development, the latest of the 288 GTO F40, F50, Enzo, into the La Ferrari, the Aperta as well, and of course, soon, the follow-up and the next in that great lineage. The thing that's crazy for me is to remember the first time that I saw this car almost 10 years ago at the Goodwood Festival of Speed in summer 2014. We were expecting to see the latest cars in the supercar paddock, and of course, the LaFerrari being newly introduced would be there, but you would think a Rosso Corsa or Nero Daytona example, not something in this color scheme. And then to find out that it was owned by Jamiroquai, by JK, who I grew up listening to, loved JK's music, and he was driving it at the hill climb as well, actually driving this car. Now, the current owner has had it for approximately five or six years, second owner of the vehicle, purchased through Joe Macari, took it also to Topaz detailing. So this has full paint protection film from Topaz, exactly like my cars, like the Schmimobiles. You have to protect the very best. You have to keep it fully operational, running and looking good. It's also recently been to Finale 
Rally Mondiale in Mugello, the annual world finals that Ferrari host for the Challenge and Race Series. So to take the car there, where there have been some amazing cars, the owner drives it, enjoys it, gets it out there. That's what it's all about. And that's why I cannot believe we're here sharing it, enjoying it, taking it all in. <laughs> My goodness, the sound of that, the sound, right. Let's come through and swing in, step in to this particularly special LaFerrari. Close down the door. Gotta be careful with dropping it into position because here we are, Monaco, the F1 circuit, <laughs> driving around past the swimming pool. Whew. What a beautiful winter's day. Surprisingly warm. Absolutely incredible. Bit of a winter market going on. Wow. Look at this. The green is just amazing. Italian flag in the center. That view in the mirror reminds me actually of the first time I ever went in a LaFerrari right now. We go around Rascas. There is a Bugatti Chiron in the Bugatti showroom. As I said, Monaco, the land of the supercars. That's the Ferris wheel. I feel like we're in an F1 car. Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz blasting down here in their Ferraris. This was just, it's just amazing. It's really, even just that first gear downshift. Whoa, -ho -ho. I'm waiting until we get up into the hills. After crossing the start line, we head up the hill towards Casino. Of course, this is, this is quite a time but this is where the F1 cars are completely flat out and we're just enjoying the gentle stroll up the hill. When the valve opens, the sound, the sound is to die for and the view out over the harbour or as much of it as you can see there. Heading up into Casino, past the cars here. Urus is a plenty. Car spotter in the making there, LaFerrari. Oh, what else do we have? G-Wagon Urus, SLS Roadster, DB11, it's a busy day. Hurricane Evo Spider. There's another Hurricane Evo over there. We've got a Turbo S. <laughs> All of the kids absolutely jaw dropped. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Every single one of them was pointing. <laughs> we head through the casino. The F1, of course, goes around the other side as opposed to through this new <laughs> setup that they've made here. Down to the Lowe's hairpin here at the Fairmont. And in fact, I don't think we're going to be able to see it, but tucked in there is a Pro Sangue. You'll have to believe me <laughs> as we continue down and onwards. Gosh, cycling up here. Police pedal power, Porsches everywhere, RS6s pretty much everywhere also. This whole new development in front since the days of filming many a video here, all of this is new. This used to be looking out to the sea right now, but we go around through Portier towards the tunnel. Bright sunshine in front of us. And obviously the very, very famous. <laughs> it's like teasing in the revs. Not bad. Nice. Yacht Club de Monaco. What else do we have here? Oh, 488. Brabus G, I think maybe, or, or certainly a modified G. We've come back around and across the start line, or finish line, whichever way you want to look at it. How about that for a view out over the ocean? Wow, as we start to get to some slightly more open roads up ahead of us. So much construction here. And some new tower blocks going up, but what a day for it. At this time of year, there aren't many better places to be. And on a road that we're coming to with a little tunnel like this, I might have to pop the window down for a moment. snaps the shifts in here are lightning fast ferocious aggressive actually quite fun when i've been driving the pro sangue so much to get the comparison with this and obviously where this this engine had begun before it evolved to the 6.5 the chap up there well actually multiple people up there have the best view of all of us paragliding looking out down over the view oh this thing's starting to come alive as you come around past the rocks the sound of this just echoing off the walls. The highway actually runs just over here. Oh, that sound. You 
places to die for. Just holding the gear for a moment. The feel. <laughs> Oh, this is perfection right now. Blue skies, bright green LaFerrari, the sound of the V12, and my face. <laughs> this thing. It's so powerful and so talky. <laughs> Madness. What a place to be. Driven up here many times in previous cars. <laughs> spoiler popping up. That's one of the cool things when we're heavy on the brakes. You can see the spoiler popping up out of the back. And it's variable. The way it adjusts, I've always been mesmerized by when you're watching it from behind. It's a very special thing to see. Pop out. Downshifts. Two nine six GTB. The open roads beckon again. And this is where, just with the views, with this car. I mean, I love this thing. Being up here, it cannot get better. It cannot possibly get better. This place. <laughs> this is unreal. It sounds so different to the Pura Sangue as well, and of course, even to the SF90 in terms of the hybrid and electrical noises. The SF90 being a V8, not a V12, so slightly unfair comparison, but a lot more going on. My word. As days go, this is a good one. To the hairpins. Stopping power is impressive <laughs> and very smooth. Sound off the rocks. This is officially awesome. Downshifts. Turn back into Monaco via the new route up here, which always looks amazing. The place has changed a lot since I spent an extended period here many years ago. But this is the perfect, perfect day for it. We're back down then, back here, back in the port, surrounded by some truly incredible yachts and one incredible bright green epic machine that I absolutely and totally love. What an amazing experience in this. Stunning, super cool, super, super cool. Wow, that was epic. We interrupt the LaFerrari for a moment because I have walked about 50 meters away to the collection de voitures Prince de Monaco. This is the most extraordinary display, which starts with some of the famous F1 driver helmets here. Mika Hakkinen, Ayrton Senna, Charles Leclerc, Daniel Ricciardo, Nico Rosberg, but I'm going to take you on a very quick tour because this is new. This has been built as part of the new facility here in the harbour. And this is, this is amazing, multiple levels. Let me take you for a quick walk around. The whole theme is even the lighting is like a racetrack. The cars on the wall giving the sense of speed, F1 cars, supercars, and downstairs, classic cars, and a lot of the history of the royal family here in Monte Carlo and Monaco, and different cars that have appeared in movies throughout the eras, Grace Kelly, the Lynx. I mean, I, I can't go into everything. I had no idea this was right here. 
and the LaFerrari is just outside. This is all about cars and stories. Look at the videos behind. You're watching that very car driven by Prince Rainier with Grace Kelly and Prince Albert on the London to Brighton rally. And now of course here, just part of this display. A lot of the cars here are from various different royal engagements over the years. For example, the Chrysler Imperial, which is the car that welcomed Grace Kelly to the Principality. It was actually green back at the time, but changed to black and silver, a theme that you spot a few times. So we come past some of the older Rolls-Royce cars that we have here. I want to come and pick out a few highlights though. We can't go into absolutely everything. The Italian section just over here, the Chisetta. On the left, we've then got a Ferrari 250 GT Pininfarina. Beautiful, the Alpha as well. Again, like I mentioned, the black and silver theme, all of the different videos, this is well worth exploring. This is actually from the wedding. This car was cut up, this Lexus was cut up to have either the ability to be totally open as it was in the sunshine, or should it have rained for the wedding to put this clear canopy in place instead and be visible out for the day. Down at the end, spot the Lamborghini Miura in bright yellow. There's also a 300 SL Gullwing just here as well, totally unrestored. This is completely original, um, I think, with the bodywork. Normally these days you only spot them in completely new restored condition. We have that car, which actually won Le Mans back in the 1950s. And of course, the Miura tucked in here next to an Alpine A110. Into some motorsport and take a look at what's coming up. I mean, we have everything here from the Bugatti Type 35 through a 1989 Mansell Ferrari F1 to the 1991 Lamborghini F1, the one year that they were running. I've actually seen, I think, three of these now. One at Mr. Miura's collection in Japan. One, I'm sure I have, but can't immediately recall. And the car that's right here. We then have, I mean, this is a really cool mix. That's actually a BMW M1 rally car, the M1 Pro car, but for rallying, the Tour de Course, which I don't think I even knew they did before. As we come on through, I mean, you've got WRC, you've got F1. This is actually Charles Leclerc's own SF90. He won two races with this exact car. Obviously a series of other cars. This also belongs to Charles, the Sauber Alfa Romeo. We've got the Porsche Tag Formula E behind, the Vettel Weber era Red Bull. I mean, this is, this is really something. Here we've got uh, a Loeb car, we've got an Ogier car. I think that's one of the winning cars that he drove. The Daytona here with the livery. I mean, we've got a 908, a Viper Green, I think quite similar to the LaFerrari outside, by the way. Signal Green being a Porsche color, but I think that's Viper Green on the 2.7 RS from 1973. And then, I mean, that's not even it. Over here, the Testarossa and the Countach, more cars on the wall, the posters. This is a really, really special place to have popped in for a visit. There are even displays like this of race-worn gloves. We've got Mika Hakkinen, David Brabham, Martin Brundle, Damon Hill, Gerhard Berger, David Coulthard to name just a few. There are more things I need to show you with this. For example, full carbon fiber roof. This was an option that they only did for about 50 of the 500 cars. So super rare to have that, obviously going very well with the green and all of the other visual carbon fiber for components like the diffuser, side skirts, and obviously around the front. But this being the pinnacle of Ferrari at the time, this was really the technology tour de force, right? Both in terms of tech, but also in terms of demonstrating what they could do, what was possible. And things like the aero profile of the doors. When you open this, the way that channel is obviously a big part of the door itself. This massive piece that opens up. Inside, so much more that I could obviously show you with this, the digital screens. I remember running through all of these when the car was new back at the time. The carbon fiber monocoque that you sit within, the seating position is just amazing in here. The limited edition plaque there at the back, one of 499, that view through to the engine bay. That's also awesome. In fact, talking engine bay, we can pop this open, leave it just here. Come on round, pop up the window, something Ferrari have always done incredibly well, is an amazing view through to the engine of the car. There is a prop that you remove, connect just down there to hold this up. But obviously looking through to that, more carbon fiber, the red stripe running right down the center, 6.3 liters of naturally aspirated V12 heaven with the orange cables, you can see obviously part of the hybrid system, the battery and electric motor. Not really offering an electric drive range like the new cars do, the SF90 and the 296 for example, but you can pilot it at very slow speeds on electric power. DB11 goes past, 
It's literally a moving motor show, which is quite interesting. Effectively, the way you do it, you step in the car very quickly. If you've never seen this, it's for parking in garages. So you'd put the key in, you would turn it on. So just turn the key, close the door. And then when you start it, it tells you silent start available. You start it up and then all you do is put it in reverse or forwards and lift off the brake. Don't touch the throttle and it just moves on electric power. As soon as you touch the throttle, just to give a demo, it fires the V12, which sounds amazing. I'm actually gonna pop this. Oh no, let's leave it in first gear and swizzle it off for the moment. Not the place to make lots of noise revving away in the harbor. But still inside here, things like USB port for your telemetry data, by the way, connects through that. There's a little storage compartment here, which you can put some documents, papers and things in over on the dashboard. More just details and things to learn about this. Obviously spending a little bit more time around the car and understanding what it's all about. But it's such a lovely thing. And sitting inside here right now, the green details, they're bright, they're bold. And having been considering green as an option, for my upcoming SF90 XX, seeing this inside has definitely got me very tempted. Hey, look, there's the telemetry cameras that I was just mentioning. That's really neatly hidden away. I don't even actually ever really spotted that. That's the film over the driver's shoulder at what you're doing while you're out piloting it. I think there are more cameras lurking. This is a camera as well, just here up on the dashboard. You've got your lock and motion sensors up above that kind of usable sun visors, which is unusual in a car like this. Grab handle just here as well to help getting in and out just on the top of the door. So very, very well thought out and put together. Not the easiest to climb out of though, I'm not gonna lie, especially when holding a video camera. All of the cars are left-hand drive. They only made it left-hand drive, so you couldn't opt for a right-hand drive car, any market. Um, but this, I mean, look back here, look at the even the cables, something cool about this. Obviously lots of batteries have been needed with something like this. Oh, I also just noticed this. This is obviously all carbon fiber. The bodywork's all carbon. You can even see the weave through the plate there that's normally hidden behind the number plates. Normally the number plates would go across here. Looks kind of fun, offset to the side. Obviously PPF'd around the Cavallino, but a phenomenal car, a phenomenal sound, a very, very special thing and amazing that we've had the opportunity today to go out, experience it, to take it in, and to just bask in the LaFerrari, in everything that this car represents, what it stands for, on a special day here. Urus, just over there, Performante as well. Monaco things, Monaco things. Before I wrap this up, I do wanna show you another thing that I'd never noticed at the time about this car. I've never seen it before, but if I come and open up the door, of course, carbon body panels, right? This is all one carbon skin, including the side skirt. And if you have a look on the underside, this is where you can see the effective mask line to leave that part invisible carbon with these parts all painted. But that is one single piece all the way from skirt up through the door, apart from, or maybe even up to the very top, all in one part. It's crazy when you think about it, how much work goes into making all of those panels and to get the visible carbon lines looking right and have it fully presented properly. A very special car to go from 10 years ago at Goodwood to here today in the south of France in Monaco, driving this, going out in this thing. Incredible, incroyable, I think we can say. Really, really spectacular. I love that this exists. I think it's possibly the only green LaFerrari in the entire world. And it's certainly a statement piece and a half. And I love that the owner of this car is happy to drive it and enjoy it because that's what this is all about passion for cars, passion in this case for Ferrari, for the LaFerrari, JK spec from his original green leathered Enzo into the successor, the LaFerrari, the Ferrari, quite literally. So that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.